YouTube, it's Brian Phillips here. Uh, the weather's horrible and it's dark, as you can see. It's 7.43 p.m. And it's been dark for what feels like 12 hours. It might not have been quite that long. So we have a new box that's wrapped in a garbage bag. And we're gonna open it for you. Oh wow, look at that, it's a helicopter. Ooh, fancy. Looks like the box has seen better days. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see how it fared in its trip from China. Uh, yeah, evidently somebody sat on that <laughs> and they were large. So we'll see if this one's gonna be any good. I'm excited for this helicopter. As you can see, it is an E-119 helicopter. 6G, uses six axis gyro, four channel series, okay? So it supposedly has a 15 minute flight time for ages 14 plus. If you're less than 14, it's some other time frame. <laughs> And it's an Ishin. See how I did that? It's Charlie Sheen's brother. Ishin. Say hi to Charlie Sheen for me. Ishin. Wow! That packaging is not amazing. Look, and yet it is not destroyed, guys. I cannot believe the packaging is just clear plastic like that. That's like retail packaging. Um. Four batteries, that's pretty awesome. Extra set of propeller blades, also known as squash blade or something like that. I don't know for all you uh, helicopter people, you'll be correcting me, I'm sure. That actually feels wonderfully, wonderfully light. These servos, same size as they use in some, some planes I've recently reviewed. And I really like the way it looks. It's super light. This thing is dinky. We gotta put this on the scale. You ready to get it? But before we do that, let's keep opening everything. It comes with one of these 2.4 gigahertz radios. The gigahertz, of course, is the frequency uh, by which the bandwidth operates within. Ha <laughs> ha! One, two, three, four, five, six! Are you kidding me? Double A's. <laughs> We tried to come prepared this time, you two. <laughs> and I was but not. But failed miserably. These batteries are 1S, I mean one cell in series. 3.7 volts lithium polymer, 350 milliamp hour, and they are 1.3 watt hours, okay? They have a low C connector, L-O-S-I. That is a balanced charge lead and a discharge lead because it's 1S, it's one and the same. So we're gonna have four of these to charge. You may have noticed I've done reviews on many, many awesome little airplanes and helicopters that use 1S batteries like this and they have this little connector, but I'm gonna show you what it came with and then I will show you a couple of different ways to charge them. I like these bags, these are nice. They're kind of like a satin finish on them. Um, I know it's kind of interesting that I care about that, but for whatever reason, they just seem to protect the stuff better. Um, they're more resistant to tearing and nobody likes their sack torn. <laughs> so we're just going to look at this charger here. This is a single charger. It doesn't have a double charger. Some of the little airliner planes that I've reviewed has two, uh, they have like a dual charger. This has one low C connector. Technically, that'd be a male connector, but probably they call it a female connector because of the case. This is technically a female connector, even though they probably call it a male. And I'm um, not giving anatomy th lessons tonight, so you can figure out why they do that. You'll notice it's not charging because it's not plugged into anything. Let's do that next. Okay. So guys, normally I would sit here and elaborate on what type of USB charger to use, but there is literally no information on this thing. So I don't really care. I'm gonna plug it into this hole like that, and then I'm gonna plug this into that hole like that. And there's a red light. Fantastic. That means it hasn't caught on fire. Serious note, lipos can be dangerous. They are the only thing in this package that could hurt you. 
And, well, I mean, other than the helicopter flopping into your eyes or your mouth or your face or your kid's face or your dog's face or your cat's face. Don't do any of those things. Seriously, it probably wouldn't hurt you though unless it hit your eye. And if it hit your eye, it'd be a bad day, so don't do that. Um, but the lipos can catch on fire if they aren't treated right and if they're overcharged. If they get over 4.2 volts, then they become unstable and they could catch on fire. So don't be a statistic. Only you can prevent forest fires. Comes with a Phillips screwdriver with one of these strange hex ends on it. I'm not really sure what that's for, but I've seen a million of them. So, I mean, there's gotta be a reason. Comes with a couple of links. Those go on to the cyclic, I believe is what that's called. You'll see the way that those go. It goes this way and then it goes that way. And that's the same way they are in the little helicopter. And by the way, the first time you crash this thing, you'll probably think, oh no, I'll never crash it. Surely I'll never crash it. Well, when you do crash it, you'll see these things will probably shoot across the room and you'll be looking for hours and you'll go right to this little satin sack and grab them right out and stop looking until your dog chews on one. Also comes with an extra pair of blades, two of them to be exact. You'll notice there's two blades on this, on the rotor, fantastic. So we are gonna teach you how to insert your batteries into the back of this. So there's six of them, just to be clear. How many is that? Two more than I got. Yes. That everything else in the see, last three weeks one, is used. Two. Dangerous video. Three, four, and it still doesn't work. We gotta put all six. Okay, fine. I'll be right. Okay, so we will pause it and come back. So, as usual, I'm gonna spend half the video talking about batteries because putting in double A batteries is pretty complicated. You take the flat side, you put it on top of the spring, you force it in, and then you're done. These springs are pretty weak. It doesn't feel like it's putting much retention on that. The one reason why you wanna watch out for that is if you drop this thing and you're running the thing, it might actually disconnect because that spring will break tension and you'll actually break the circuit in there. Six, six batteries are in series typically, so it's 1.5 times six, so it runs on a different voltage. You could probably run this on, uh, what is it? Six volts or so. Hey, look at this. See these batteries? This is pretty cool. It says, it says E-Sheen on it. Okay. That's kind of nice. E -sheen. <laughs> so I'm going to write E119 on each of the batteries. Because when you get like 400 of these helicopters and different, uh, different models, and you're like your favorite YouTuber, Brian Phillips, then you're gonna wanna label them too because then you will have some idea of the vintage of the LiPo. What will happen is over time, you will collect many, 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 many charges similar to this uh, using uh, just a regular USB plug. You'll plug it into something like this. This comes off of a Kodak camera from many, many moons ago. And we're gonna charge these really quick. Keep in mind when you charge LiPos in a balance style charger like this they typically are supposed to be of equal discharge i can't say that for a fact on this but they just happen to be of equal discharge now how would you know if they're discharged equally good question i'm going to show you how you would do that you would take this thing this is a cell tester and you would stick it in here and then it would come on and barely beat because it's only got one cell and it says all is 3.92 that's a little strange normally storage mode is about 3.8 volts so these things are partially charged. Look at that, 3.92. That's pretty cool. Um, typically, the chemistry on a LiPo is going to be the most, the most stable at 3.8 volts. Don't ask me why, just what I've read. And when I say read, I heard it on YouTube. <laughs> so I didn't read it, I heard it on YouTube. So, come on over, come on over, people. I'm gonna show you the other way you can charge these. See, it's charging, wow, that's fancy. There's two red lights. When the red lights go out, they're charged. You can check it if you want. I'm not gonna do that, it's a waste of time. This is my little adapter. Don't do anything dangerous like this. But if you happen to have a proper low C connector, you could just make an end. And we're going to take the last final battery and we're going to charge it on my regular charger just to show you that it can also be done. This is a common sense battery charger. They've been making this variety for a long time. I also have one here from Hobby King. Nothing special. Um, if you guys are looking, I 
I believe I have links, standing links in like all my videos on where you can buy stuff like this. Something similar to it. So verify polarity is correct. Black to black, red to red. And then I'm gonna plug this in here. Since it's 1S, there's only one wire to land. This contraption is a balanced charger. You might have a contraption like this when you get a charger like this. You may also not have that, and you may also have a bunch of plugs in the side of your charger, but they all just basically work the same. I'll show you how to set it up. This is a LiPo charge. I wanna go over to LiPo balance. Except this is 1S, you don't need that. You're just gonna do LiPo charge. Press start, change that to about half the rate of whatever this is. So this is 350 milliamp hours. That is a rate, not a not an amplitude, okay? So this is the charge rate, which is 0.2. We're gonna change that to 0.3, or we're gonna change this to 0.2. Here, I'll help you with that. So we're gonna leave it at 0.2, we're gonna leave it at one, and we're gonna press and hold to start. And then it's gonna check the battery, and we're gonna press start to acknowledge, and then it tells you what it's charging, how many amps are coming out, and the current voltage that's in that pack. Pretty cool. So alternatively, you can just plug this thing into your USB adapter and you're off and running. <gasps> Camera crew. Or you can plug it into the one that came with it, which would be even smarter. And then about three or four hours later, you can be flying, which let me tell you something, people are gonna be freaking out with that long of a wait. Ooh, look at that fancy thing. Let's turn on the transmitter and take a look at it. While we wait for a few minutes, it has a nice big blue black light. Throttle is here. You can see the little wigglies. That's cool, simulating the wiggles of the sticks. And look, the frequency changes. That's so nice. It's currently set up in mode two. That means throttle is here. Give me a shot a little bit further back. Throttle's here. That makes this thing spin in increasing frequency faster. Then this will yaw the aircraft by increasing or decreasing the offset from the thrust on this tail rotor. This will tip the swash plate, which will cause the, the helicopter to go like this. Let's go up a little higher. It's gonna make it go like this, and it's gonna make it go like that, and then it's gonna make it go like this, and it's gonna make it go like that. We call that pitch. We call this roll. Even though it looks the same, it just has a relational, a relationship of the way that this swash plate changes. And that's gonna force the blades to go into that direction. That's the way uh, a full collective pitch helicopter works. So that's the four channels of control. Obviously we have to have the batteries charged, but you're lucky YouTube because I have 350 milliamp packs. So I'm gonna get one right now. So guys, what I did was I found a 360 milliamp hour, which is from the P51 that we just reviewed the other day. And I'm just gonna show you a size comparison. Uh, very similar. Look at this, it's, it's very similar. Helicopters are notoriously picky about the size of the LiPo. If you try to ram it in and it's too big, it's gonna squeal. Don't even try. So to get the battery in, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. The first way is really easy. You're just gonna slide it down into that little hole there. But if you would ever need to get in, you can take these off. It's just a rubber grommet here, and that will allow you to pop the side off. Okay, you can get down in there. <gasps> Look, I'm glad I did that. There's a screw in there. What the heck is that screw doing in there? Megan? The loose one? I mean, camera crew, why did oh, you put that in geez. there? That's crazy. Don't lay it down on our countertop. Yeah, no kidding. Never see I it put again. it on top of that awesome bag. So there's a magnet on uh, the motor, and so obviously it's stuck to that. Okay, so you see how, see how easy that comes off? Looks like a little bend there. And you can see the receiver, pretty cool. Looks like the same receiver board they use in those little WL toy, uh, WL hobbies devices. Not sure what the protocol is. You could probably get away with using a, a J8 or excuse me, what is that thing called? The jumper? Oh, mm-hmm. So for now, we'll go ahead and put that back on. Um, I do like this fuselage, cowling cover, whatever you wanna call it, because it's gonna resist damage. It's very light. 
and I'm not going to feel bad if I bang into something with it. So let's go ahead and try to slip this in. I guess we're going to find out if you need that screw. Oh, that screw had to have been pretty stinking important since. <laughs> okay, so a couple things. First of all, when you get ready to plug in your helicopter, make sure your throttle's all the way down. Let's see, is there a throttle cut? I don't see anywhere that would be acting as a throttle cut. We do have trims on this remote, which is nice. You would think that there um, would be an arming thing, but I went through the manual and it's, while this is a relatively good manual in terms of having uh, English and Chinese, the English is more like Changlish. I complain about that. Sometimes people give me trouble, but to be honest with you, it, it's somewhat useless because the technical jargon is lost. So you can just watch my video and I'll teach you how to do it. This is a mode two transmitter that's important. If you want a mode one, it's gonna be a mode two. I'm not sure how to switch it, there might be a way. I'm not aware of it yet. If I find out, I'll let you guys know. So one thing too, you gotta be careful that this wire doesn't get into the gears, okay? So I am gonna go ahead and write it on this side of the leg. Um, and I'm just gonna probably go ahead and wrap that around like this. It's not as pretty this way, but it'll be fine. So I'm gonna plug it in and then quickly lay it down. That, ooh, that didn't work. You see how it was sitting up on the battery? Go ahead and unplug that. I prefer to get this stuff level. Why don't you zoom out just a little bit so they can see I come over here. Um, I prefer to have the aircraft level and flat before I plug it in. I prefer to have the transmitter on. It's not always like that. Um, the last plane I reviewed, the instructions were either confusing or I didn't read them properly. Okay, now we're just going to see if this thing is already bound. Um, oh yeah, see? It's moving. Let's give him a shot from this side now, camera crew. So, from over here. Swash plate working. Swash plate working. And then nothing because there's no throttle engaged. Okay, now let's see if we can get a shot from the side here so they can see what we're talking about with the swash plate. You're gonna have to get way down there. There you go, perfect, now watch. It's just bogging down the motor because it's not spinning fast enough. But now you can see the tail working. See, it's allowing it to spin. Look at that, it's backward. No, it's not backward, there was just not enough. Okay, so let's show them this. So because this is spinning, it has centripetal force and this motor counteracts that centripetal, centripetal force. So there is a point when you don't have enough airspeed or throttle speed for this rotor to have any effect, the tail rotor. Now you do when you're going that way, but watch when I go the other way, there's just not really enough. You have to go a little bit faster for it to work. You guys see how that works? The other thing I'm not crazy about so far is the fact that this button, they have the, the clicker buttons, and so there's play and slop in that control. I'm not crazy about that. So we are going to, without further ado, we are gonna to try to fly this thing and see how good or bad it flies and how hard it is to fly. Now I wanna give you guys a disclaimer, I'm not a helicopter pilot, I'm a airplane pilot, so we'll see. Oh, geez, that is easy. Super, super easy. I mean, like really, really easy. Um, the responsiveness of the yaw control is very poor right now because of that slop in the control. So I'm gonna land it. And I gotta put this stuff away because it's blowing away off the table. So we'll pause and get that set. You'll be helicopter, the stick is all the way down and it's not shut off. So I'm gonna adjust my trim. <laughs> That's a long ways to have to adjust the trim. You can press and hold it. So just be aware of that. It's something to watch for. We're going to pause it, clean this stuff up so we don't have it blowing all over the place. So again, we've got stuff off the counter, so now we can fly it some more. Really easy flying. I'm, like I said, I'm not, a, I'm not a heli pilot, really. We'll probably get an opportunity to show you how it fares. Very little, uh, very little yaw control when rotating to the uh, to the left, and I'm really kind of having to oscillate a lot to keep it in a hover, 
because the sensitivity or insensitivity, depending on which way you want to look at it, of the throttle axis is poor. The left stick is worse on my controls than the right stick. I have good pitch authority and roll authority, which is very critical in a helicopter, but the uh, authority from the throttle stick is poor, and that could be a, a personal preference thing. But just not so much a personal preference thing is the fact that look how small this is. That's dinky in relation to the size of the main rotor. So you'll notice that there's just a certain amount of ineffectiveness on that small rotor. But in terms of flight characteristics, it's flying very good. Um, and it's really cool to be able to fly something like this. I mean, a few years ago, you would not be able to get anywhere near this quality of flight out of a, a, a you know, nearly $50 helicopter. And again, not a great pilot for helis. I can get them around okay, but I'm not the best pilot. A lot, of, a lot of bouncing here. I'm not crazy about that up and down. It'd be nice if I had better control of the, of the rudder uh, to help. Because I'm going to just try to get you guys a view of it. I'm really having to ride that fine line to keep the thing from going up and down. And you notice I'm keeping the, keeping the tail right pointed at me just because that makes me feel more comfortable. It's so light, it's just, it feels like there's going to be zero consequence to a rough landing. Because it's just, there's just nothing to it, which, which is awesome. Let's weigh the thing with the battery in it. Um, it's super light, and for that reason, it's going to have a longer flight time. The motor's not going to be working very hard. Uh, so we'll put that in grams, or kilos in this case. <laughs> We're sub 50 grams. With the battery. With the battery. That's incredible. That's crazy. All right. Um, and that battery is actually heavy. This battery is bigger. technically bigger. It's not, not much. I mean, 360 milliamp hours compared to 350 milliamp hours. Yeah, hardly it's any. Hardly anything. Yeah. So, and you could stuff that lead up inside the nose of the, the aircraft. It'd probably help a little bit with the balance. It gets, it gets up quick. But I just wish I had more authority. Like I'm trying to get it to, to, to roll there or not roll, but yaw, and it just doesn't want to. Maybe I could try to trim it a little bit. It looks nice in the air. Let's try to Enrique it. Enrique Iglesias. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That was easy. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try to fly it, camera crew? Uh, no. Why? Because I don't want to crash it. What's wrong with that? <laughs> That's why we review these things, so that you can crash yours and they won't crash theirs. Jeez. Yeah, see, I just don't, I'm like trying to ride the stick all the way to the left and it just barely makes the turn. So maybe if I just flew around the room this way, whoo! I want to come over here. I'm, this is 2.4 gigahertz, so it's not like you have to worry about having a line of sight like some of the older ones. Uh, to maintain radio contact. There's, it really snaps back to level quickly. I would say it's a lot harder to fly than like some of the simpler drones you've seen, but uh, it sure looks cool, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty stinking stable. Well, and if you're looking for a step up or if you have a kid that wants a helicopter a kid that's 14 plus years right old. it's already had a drone yeah this is different it's you know to be honest with you it's probably it's it's just i almost want to crash it for the people at home just so they can see how little damage it's going to do it's so light i don't i don't suspect it's going to damage very bad mm -hmm. um here let's let's see if we can get a still over here well not a still but like let's get an opportunity for a still here Ooh, let's go to the christmas tree let's just do a little christmas tree still you, should I crash into the Christmas tree? No, not my tree. Why? Crash into my furniture or something. What furniture do you want me to crash into? <laughs> not oh, my... Oh, no! See, look. I didn't even have to do anything. It just took <laughs> right off. Guys, that's, that's what I'm talking about. When these things hit, there's just nothing to them. Mm -hmm. They're very light. There's nothing to them. Um, but the other thing is when you do hit, just make sure you didn't chip your blades. If you did chip your blades, you can actually clean the edge of it. And if you have to cut just a little teeny bit off, cut it off the other side too. Let's try reverse Enrique. Well, that was easy. 
I think that the Enrique move is why they don't want 14 year olds to have these. Or, well, sorry, 14 year olds are okay. 13 year olds are not. Yes. Huge difference. It's very quiet, too. It is. Like, extremely quiet. A little bit inresponsive on, on throttle. Like, you see that? I just got hit by the tail rudder, and it didn't even scratch me. I mean, it's just, there's just nothing to this. I mean, in terms of the amount of mass that's spinning around. So I just don't see it being dangerous. Except for the LiPo, and to be honest with you, you would have to mistreat the LiPo like crazy and do stupid things. I had not enough yaw to even tip the tail there. Can you turn off yeah. the stabilization? Yeah, I probably can. I bet it's gonna be, whoa, oscillation of death. I don't know if you guys can see, probably not, because you're watching the heli, but the amount of oscillation of the stick to get it to do that is pretty incredible. Okay, so we're gonna try it without this uh, 6G access, six axis, uh, the six axis gyros. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn that off. I believe you just press that. We'll see how bad it is. Uh, feels like it's still on. Boy, the yaw access is just pretty weak. It still flies good. It lets you move around quite a bit, but it really wants to snap back. That's what I'm trying to resist. All right, I want to try one other thing. Okay, let's come over here so we can show the people at home. Normally on a heli like this, if you wanted to really refine the way that it works, you would go into your menu and you would make some changes. Well, I don't know that we can really do that. You can see it's representative of the output on the swash plate here, which is pretty cool. And let's show them in here for another view. I think part of the problem is that these really small servos are not very powerful. I believe they're like a one or two gram servo. And if, if I could just get a little bit more resistance on this stick, see that? Look guys, see that? <laughs> Pretty sure that's why I'm struggling. Did you see how much of a change that was? Look at that guys. So is the I, other one? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, we're going to pause it and we're going to go just grab a different radio and see if we can bind up and fly. We might not be able to though. Okay. So guys, I got a million transmitters that come with these ready to fly airplanes and helicopters. And so this was the most recent one. It was an Ishin uh, P51. So we were going to try that real quick. Of course, this is the one that comes with it. It's, it's a little bit different setup, uh, but I believe they both have the same number of channels. So you see it's flashing because it hasn't found it. This is beep. That doesn't really mean anything. Okay. So I'm just going to shut that back off. I'll show you what happens when this catches the bind here. So it goes solid. And then of course it works. Now, the problem we're experiencing with this is this slop here. Okay. That's not normal. Uh, you won't probably have that issue. So I'm actually just going to dig into it now. Uh, I've done it before and people always give me trouble about it, but too bad. I want to. I want to play with it and I don't want to have trouble flying it. So I'm just going to dig into it and see how bad it is to fix that. So we'll pause it real quick and come back and show you what it takes. Okay. Okay. So I've got a couple of various size Phillips head screwdrivers. We're going to pop off, pop out the batteries. Okay. Got six of them in there and we're just going to see if this is super easy to fix. And uh, if it's not super easy to fix, then you'll know for future reference in case you get the same thing. If you recall, my box was kind of crushed. So, this probably wasn't Yusheen's problem, except that the packaging was a little bit weak. If you ask me, uh, probably should have been packed in another box. Sorry, Yusheen. But that is what you get sometimes when you order stuff that's cheap. Um, I really like the way it flies and I think it should fly better, which is why I'm doing this. And it's not the first time I've done this to a helicopter that I've received. Nope. You should go show them that one in the in the office quick. Which one? It's the blue one. Is that the one you fixed? Yeah, I fixed it. Or you fixed the... That one. That one. Yes. Yep. That's an XK product. Yep. And so is so, that one. Let's show the people that's home. But not that one. Come back, camera crew. No. 
So what I've done is I've undone four screws very simply. It wasn't hard at all. One, two, three, four, but then this one is giving me problems coming out. I don't know why, so I'm just gonna just do it. Cause like if it breaks, I don't really care. It's not that big a deal. See this guys? There's kind of a plasticky area up there. The antenna doesn't even really go into it. It's just like a pretend in antenna housing. <laughs> you see that guys? The antenna is not stuck in through there. So not really super concerned about that. Can they really see that or do yeah. we need to get another light going? Um, so my hope was to pull this apart without any sort of damage, but to be perfectly honest, this antenna is not evidently doing anything. There's the little caps. Those just cover up your top buttons. And I just need to make sure I'm not gonna break anything, which the only thing I'm gonna break is somebody's heart by doing that. And to be honest with you, it's not doing anything on my transmitter. Once this goes back together, I will just stuff that back up into the hole, okay? So just looking real quick, the quality of the build is exactly as expected. Of course, this is the transmitter board. This is the controller interface. So I'm just gonna pop off that board real quick. There's two screws here, very simple stuff. Um, nothing too extensive. Um, and my camera crew is going to be very mindful of where those screws end up in the event of such a uh, tipping accident that would cause them to fly across our granite countertop and never be seen again in our lives. Mm -hmm. So again, not a big deal. I wanna fix this and it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be better than new. Okay, so we're just gonna try. It looks like there's one more screw here. So we're just gonna pop that off. That should get us access to the front half of the board. Looks like another screw here oh, and another screw here. So I'm just laying them in the back of this battery. You guys haven't seen a build video forever. I feel almost like I've cheated you, YouTube. Mm. My, my camera crew disagrees. <laughs> okay, so then this can, yep, pops right up. Okay, good deal. So now, if you'll look, we have the power switch. That will just slip on there super easily. So we'll do that here in a minute. Um, before we set that back in. Nope, after we set that back in, okay? So we've got these uh, joysticks. Wow, <laughs> those are pretty stinking high quality. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I can imagine why I was having problems now. And within this mechanism, there's a trim pot, a, a potentiometer, and then there's another potentiometer. And then there's, uh, of course, two potentiometers, and this has a spring return. So it puts that back to the center when you're not using the stick. This one does not return you to center when you're not using it. So it's a very simple board in terms of um, the components used, very cheap gimbals. These are called gimbals, if you didn't know that. So just looking at the, the mechanism, uh, I don't see that they're broken. I just think that maybe they popped off. If you wanna give them a view of that, there's a slot which, see that slips onto. And once it slips on there, it's pretty much set. Uh, so I wonder if maybe that's that's well, all that that's going going loose. wrong. Maybe it was just loose. And if it's if it's loose to the point of coming off, I'll just put a little dab of glue on that, and that should fix my problem. Because that feels. You feel that? You you see that? Feel that? Yeah, it looks. It looks like it's just not making an, enough purchase into the actual uh, stick. So I'm I'm just for, for grins and giggles. I'm just going to swap those. And get a shot from like way steep over here so they can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just sliding that pin right into that Sorry. socket. And then I'm just moving it. You see, it's 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 not translating my movement to the movement of the gimbal. I don't think the gimbal's broken at all. I'm just looking at it closely. There's nothing broken on that. It's working fine. I think there's just too much slop on it. So I am going to fix that right now and I'll show you what I'm gonna do right in a second. This is CA. It's made by Bob Smith Industries BSI. Um, Sinoacrylite, I believe that's right. This bottle uh, has been open for a while so it's not super runny, but it's a medium thickness. Nothing special about this. You can get this at any hobby shop that sells uh, radio controlled airplanes virtually anywhere in the, the world. So I'm just gonna put a little drip of this on here. And I'm actually gonna take a little bit back off because I got a little bit too much on it. I'm gonna spread it to the other side. Can you give the people at home a view from the other side, please? Over my shoulder, right shoulder. Now that that's on there, I'm gonna use what I call Kicker or Instaset in this case as a brand. I'm gonna just put one little drip of that in there and that will make the glue set up almost instantly. 
and I just need to make sure I get it lined up properly. I don't want to tip that over. And you don't want the glue to go down in your gimbal. Okay, so I'm just going to stick that down on there. And I'm just going to slide it. I can already tell it's like trying to stick feverishly. So I'm just going to let that set for about two seconds and it's done. Oh yeah, way better. Hmm. Feels solid now. Just like this one. Okay, so now it doesn't feel like it's slopping in and out. And you know, there's a time and a place for that. Uh, it's not here and it's not now. 14 plus kids. <laughs> just saying but only if you love it so we're gonna slide these back into their respective oh no the trans oh no watch this these these are your trim knobs the trim knobs i was afraid those things were gonna pop out they're gonna be a bear cat to get back it looks like one trim knob escaped uh, over to there and then these trim knobs escaped and power switch. power switch goes on from the outside i believe actually see look it's super oh, okay. high tech Mm, so that okay. will just slide on after and we'll just slip those back down obviously we need to make sure that we align these switches here and yes you guys are probably thinking to yourself are you kidding me you just fix that transmitter for an unboxing yeah that's the way we roll around here on brian phillips youtube or brian phillips rc on youtube if it don't work what do we do camera crew we fix it that's right we, <laughs> we fix it because we're too lazy to get a hold of the people who sent it and have them fix it which they would gladly do i'm sure they would we don't work with partners that would not um okay now i'm gonna just flip this make sure all the buttons actuate which they do they does and they did and then there's some screws we're just gonna drop the first screw right in. Okay, so we'll just get this started. Pretty simple stuff. Of course I need to, um, oh, you know what? That screw actually came from the back. Dang it. Camera crew, you were supposed to stop that from happening. Wait, they're different? They're different, I think they're different. Yeah, those ones are from the back. Oh. The reason it was sitting oh, on the yeah, I see. countertop was it came from the back. Okay, so we're just gonna get this assembled and get a couple of screws started and then we will probably pause it well no we won't pause it you guys are already invested now yeah you know putting in those last three screws really it makes a big difference makes the you video you never know if i go to put this last screw in and the thing breaks in three pieces what if you missed that i mean wouldn't you be annoyed as a consumer that you had to watch that <laughs> i mean not the fact that you had to watch me fix this thing I was just thinking it was like the highlight of my day. It was? Wow, you had a pretty good day. We did have like a pseudo blizzard. Oh, we did have crappy. a blizzard. That's right, I had to drive halfway across mm -hmm. the state. That was fun. I always like driving halfway across the state in blizzards. Yes. Um, that's what I do for fun when I'm, you know, working for my professional day job. Hey, don't forget your buttons. I know. Okay. I'm just uh, trying to get the screw that was under it. So I can stick it in the hole right there. Oh yeah, that's the one. All six holes. Now, now, back to your point, camera crew. We're gonna just slip that right in there. We're gonna just slip that right in there. And then we're just gonna make sure this stuff's out of the way because I'm about to spill it. Now, let's show the people this real quick. What? You may have noticed Spilling that I it? have a uh, Pringles uh, or similar type. Actually, these were great value. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, very good solution because I spill this thing every time I fill it, I knock it over immediately. Every time. And it drives me crazy because that stuff is expensive. Um, one of the more expensive products that you must have. <laughs> Get it now. Um, now, you see this antenna? The, the one that never was technically stuck through the antenna hole, which is just a little bit awkward that they didn't do that. But I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not surprised either. It doesn't quite reach, which is why they didn't do it, you see? <laughs> So I'm not like really off put by that because we're not talking about like a big long range here. We're talking about like flying it in your living room. You're not flying it across your neighborhood. Although you probably could do that um, on a calm day if you were 14. A longer. really, really calm day. No, this thing would do all right. It's <laughs> a little bit of wind. Not a lot, but a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna just kind of squish that together and make sure 
Up, down, left, right. Oh yeah, baby, that thing is fixed. It's good. Ooh, might need some loading time with this thing. <laughs> so look at this, guys. We're gonna go right there. Just pop that on there. Boop. Oops, I uh, put it on backward. <laughs> Uh, yep, sorry. Oh, get out of there. Did I put that on? On? Well, I think it's on backward. It doesn't really matter, but for the sake of, for the sake of YouTube, there we go. On, off, on, okay. Now we need to plop the last four screwdrivers in, screws in, and then we will stick the batteries in and come right back. So the moment of truth, guys. We'll plug in this battery and see if the repairs worked. Oops. Feels a little bit better actually. It's easier to control without the stick moving around like that, but it's still a little bit weak on the rotor. Just having trouble overwhelming the gyro, the six axis gyro in that yaw axis. That's not uncommon. I suppose if you have such a small, that would be my charger. Okay, let's fly over and look at the batteries. Okay, these are done supposedly. This one is full, supposedly. And I also noticed that the stock charger is also full. So ironically enough, they all charged about the same speed. Let's just see these in order and then you'll know about how long if you really wanna go through and start and stop your video. We didn't stop it for long. So yeah, 4.2 volts, okay. Then this is a WL Toys variety of charger. Remember, we're looking for 4.2 volts on the stock charging setup. One cell, all 4.2, good. And then this one here, this is the third pack. Um, 4.22, <gasps> dangerous. Then this is the stock pack, which is done. The light is off, as you can see. And we're at 4.2. So, the charger works, the helicopter works. The preference issue I have with, with um, respect to the yaw rate, I don't know if that's a big issue. We're gonna try some more things here. Okay, so, I'm trying to switch to another mode. Doesn't really, doesn't really seem like it stopped. The gyro. Except has it? it seems to be a little bit quicker. That's a lot faster on the tail. Of course, I don't want to crash into stuff, guys. You may not have your wife filming you, <laughs> but I kind of do, so. If I crash, she'll know. Should we crash it for the people at home? Or did I already crash it? I crashed well, it you, the Christmas yeah. week, right? Is it easy to fly? I think it's pretty easy to fly. I want my camera crew to fly it. Will you fly it, please? You should fly it real quick. Let's just. I, I should not. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, my camera crew doesn't want to fly. Don't film me. Just film the. Just film the. Okay, I'm just filming. Just you filming the helicopter. Like do this and not okay, me. so this is throttle. Um, I'm that part I at least know. See, and okay. then this is the, the. That's like tipping it, and then that's tipping it forward and backward. Just remember, if you get into trouble, just crash it. <laughs> I, that's probably goes without saying. Okay, ready? Go. 
You'll be fine. It's super easy. If you can fly it, I wouldn't make you do it if you couldn't fly it. See? Look at this. She doesn't fly stuff. Oh, what'd you do? Oh, no, my poor precious. Okay, down on your throttle stick. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, so throttle stick down. We're just going to give her a lot of room here. She's scared. This is going to be the next 150 million <laughs> yeah, views. Great. This is what it'll be. It's me making a fool of myself. Nah. I don't have... There you go. She is, she is flying. She's not supposed to be in camera. I would not see it in front of me. Oh, it's okay. I could Enrique it. <gasps> what did you do? Okay. See? She's got this. She's got it. Just remember, just lean this stick forward a little bit. I know, it's too close to the... This one. This one. Right away? Yeah, just lean it forward. There you go. Okay. Watch out for my human feet. Okay, go ahead. You see how they're together? It'll take a second. Oh, I should get away from this yeah, thing. Yeah, you should. Go. You're going to, like, chop me up. All right, just give it a little bit of throttle to get it out of the air. Or get it up there. You'll be fine. Jeez, that's not a problem. <laughs> Okay, landed in the middle of the living room. Whoa, that was quite the landing. Ah, oh my goodness. Oh, did it make it? It survived. Oh my goodness, it, it's no damage. No damage at all. If they can survive me, they can survive all me. All right, let me, let me, okay, you, you're you gonna do this. You ready? Just, Where am I going? You're gonna fly to the middle of the living room. Okay, ready? Remember, this is a zero experience. This is a collective pitch yeah. helicopter. Ooh. See, it's yeah, a perfect, it. perfect landing. <laughs> it's perfect landing. Oh, goodness gracious. And guys, the moral of the story is this thing is resilient and it's so stinking light that it just doesn't care. Okay, just lean it forward a little bit. Keep on the throttle. You got to move it up and down. Oh, no! No collateral damage. We survived. You'll notice, guys, this thing is not broken yet. Nope. Now, remember... When your kids get one of these that are 14 years old, of course they are, then this is, this is what you have to look forward to. <laughs> like Except they probably, play video games. Probably better. Exactly. Just use the, the yaw, the move your left stick, left or right, and see what happens to the tail. Why can't it? Oh no, oh no, oh no. Look, it's still not broken, guys. See? It's not broken. One thing you do have to watch out for is you see this there's a hair and what will happen is if you have human women or people male with the uh, long hairs the long hairs need to be pulled out because this will totally clog up your gears all right is that it yes i'm good she's not supposed to be filmed sorry we'll edit that out <laughs> <laughs> okay so after seeing my life flying it made me excited to try some more cool things i have not figured out how to turn off the 6g mode but it's just it, it makes me want to fly it better for you people at home <laughs> what well, no, my demonstration I mean, wasn't good enough i just realized that i was flying it like a beginner and i i know how to fly these things Whoa! but with that limited yaw access you do have to be really kind of, you have to get into it. You have to mix your controls. Oh, no! Let's see if we broke it. That was my cabinet. It's okay, you at the door. <laughs> Shh. Guys, this is like the torture test of the century, except only slightly easier on it than your kids will be. You want to turn on the, uh... <laughs> my life flashed before her eyes. Okay. So we're gonna turn on our gigantic fan. Oh geez. And we're gonna do a fan test. Is the light switch off? Mm -hmm. Yep. Hold now, on. Now we got we gotta show them the schizophrenic fan. Yeah. Okay. So you turn it on. And then you push some buttons. Power. Because it doesn't know what it wants to do. It's like, hold on. Nope. Let's no do it again. on. On. There you go. I command you to be on. And then just like your children, it listens perfectly. Yeah. What the heck? It's the one time it works. Okay. No, you so, gotta change the direction. Yeah, so we're gonna put it in the heat mode so it sucks it in. And then we'll see what happens. <laughs> we have a fan wind simulation. So that we're gonna put it on the low wind speed. Wind we'll simulation. Which means it like does your regular wind patterns, which is gonna be super awesome. <laughs> what are you so, doing? Okay, so watch out. 
We'll just take off from the seam. Just. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. Let's go up by the bank. Going into the danger zone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Consequence for crashes, guys. I, I so badly want to throw it across the room just for fun. Don't throw it. Okay, I'll crash it. Okay, yes. here we go. Caution to the wind. That was an intentional crash, just to show you. That's probably about like the way it's going to be. You're not going to. You're not going to fly into the wall every time. That's every other time. If you want an intentional crash, you should just let me fly again. Still flying perfectly. Okay, intentional crash. <laughs> It's in the tree. <laughs> Guys, I don't, I don't know what else to demonstrate. It's just, it, it's resilient. The uh, controller kind of getting a little bit of a fit. It Enrique's perfectly, which means catching it while flying, which is something you shouldn't don't do. Don't try that at home. About it. It's pretty speedy, actually. It's got power to spare. But the yaw is, I would argue, somewhat underwhelming. You can do some nice scale flight performance, which is pretty cool. That's usually the way I like to fly helis. Mostly because I like to fly it like it's going through a canyon, filming some awesome YouTube video for Brian Phillips RT. But if you're getting it for your kid that's 14 plus. Or it's 36. Or 36. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Is it just in my head or is that like changing? Whoa. Oh, it's flashing. I wonder, I wonder if that's like battery? a voltage warning. Because it was not flashing before. It would be a good low investment beginner Christmas I gift. Because our this. kid that's 14 plus can totally fly that. I mean. The only thing I can't figure out is why it won't turn off the six axis mode. I have run into these problems before with these little helis. The thing is, guys, let's be honest, I'm not that good of a pilot anyway, and I don't wanna fly upside down. I don't think this thing would actually fly upside down. Mm. It's a fly barless, um, collected pitch, but I'm not 100% sure this thing will produce thrust uh, the other direction because the shape of the blades. Hmm. Um, that's only gonna produce lift this way. It's gonna produce suction the other way. And you are not, eh, yeah, you are changing the pitch of the blades. So collective pitch, meaning that the pitch um, of the rotors change, and then you can change the throttle too. I don't know if I can get it off of this, man. I need mean, the camera crew. We can. Could you like <laughs> that? Did it scare you? I only don't, you only scare me with helicopters. <laughs> well, I mean, this thing wouldn't hurt. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. Okay. Guys, that's all you get for tonight. Not. I can't figure out how to turn off the, um, <clears throat> the six axis gyro. If I figure out how to do it, we'll come right back. Okay, so folks, uh, real quick, I tried my best. This, this is the type of thing, I talk about Changlish. It's a really nice manual, it's color, um, but uh, the remote control cannot be converted right hand uh, manager to look for when buying mode. So what that means is, in English, is that this is a mode 2 transmitter and you can't switch it uh, once you've bought it. Now it is possible when you like tear it apart and Frankenstein you can probably do that. 
Um, but they're suggesting that you can't. There isn't like a button press sequence you can do. And this is where I'm confused, okay? So on the mode two, like what we have, this, this page, just be careful which page you're looking at. That's mode one, okay? If you look at this, it says hover debugging keys improved at the factory. What, what did they improve at the factory? This thing flies. I'm not trying to beat them up over the helicopter's performance. It's just a little strange to me that these Chinese manuals will do this to us and um, makes it rather difficult to uh, understand because it's not really English at all. You sort of get the idea, like power LED, that's correct. Speed control stick, it's not actually correct at all. Direction, trim, power switch. Really what happens is you have trim for your yaw, you have trim for your throttle, you have trim for your uh, pitch, and then you have trim for your roll, okay? Uh, it's a pretty simple controller. Um, rudder conversion change. I think there might be a speed of output on the yaw axis, and that's what I was trying to figure out for you guys at home. So we're gonna test that real quick, and then we're gonna call it quits. Um, and real quick, it looks like that flashing battery may actually indicate that the battery is dead or near dead. So we're going to pop out this 360 milliamp pack, test the voltage, and then we'll come back uh, with the, another battery. Let's see what the voltage is at now. We didn't see any sort of uh, special low voltages. Hmm, that's like either really dead or we're not making contact. It could just be really dead. I'm thinking it's probably just really dead. Um, so we'll just do this. We'll just plug it into my little handy dandy adapter and we'll check the voltage with our more robust tool. And then we'll go ahead and use one of the factory provided um, charged now batteries. Okay, so we'll plug that in. We'll stop this sequence and we'll start it at the 0.2 amp charge rate. Okay, 0.2. Yeah, is it like 2.7 volts or 2.6? So at that rate, this little device is not going to turn on unless you have multiple cells in series and then the nominal voltage of those set of cells will run this. So we'll use a Yishin cell to start it back up. And we'll see if we can get the very, very good fit, by the way. Uh, we'll just go ahead and set this down. I like to set it level. So it's set level. It's obviously bound. Okay. Very similar flight performance. Nothing special. Um, nothing different than what we saw with the 360 milliamp pack. Um, Definitely, as this thing gets ready to need a charge, that light will start flashing. So that's your low voltage warning. So we're gonna check for the mode on the yaw control. Not hearing any beep feedback, nothing, so I just pressed it once. Let's see if there's an improvement in the amount of yaw output. It's a little bit more, but I wouldn't, wouldn't say it's a huge change. Um, I am able to get it to to get it to <laughs> yaw a little bit better but as you can see i pretty much made a mistake there let's show them the damage just paint just paint didn't even damage the paint on the wall guys i mean that's pretty incredible this is just white paint on wood didn't even knock it out of balance that's pretty awesome okay so we're good there so we'll land it Press that one more time. I heard a double beat that time. I can't say that there's a huge difference, guys. It feels about the same. And uh, one thing they said in the manual is keep the tail pointed at you, except they said it in some broken Changlish. Um, that is a very good tip. If you guys are new to helicopters, keep the tail towards you and it will help you fly. Um, it's gonna be the easiest way to keep this thing under control as you learn to fly. Um, would this be the easiest aircraft to learn to fly on? Probably not. Is it easy to fly compared to other helicopters that I've flown? Yes. The consequence level for crashes is virtually nil, and that is why it's a good helicopter. Is it as easy to fly as your little uh, $15 drone? Not really, but it's still pretty easy. And it is really cool, especially at this price point, guys. Um, 
Just got a little dent from his crashing into the wall at full speed. This is this is probably, I would say, I'm gonna give this like a 65% out of 100. And you're thinking, man, that seemed like it performed pretty good for a 65. Yeah, the only reason I'm giving it a 65 is because the person that wants this heli is gonna probably be um, in the middle range of piloting. And they might be a little bit disappointed with that yaw axis control. But it's still a good one. If this was a gift, it would be awesome. If you got like four or five of these for your kids, I mean, granted, that'd be a pretty decent budget right there. Um, if you if you had you know a Christmas gift exchange or something like that, this would be cool. Um, just make sure it's at somebody else's house. <laughs> Come back for more, guys. Hey guys, I figured out what the buttons do. Finally, sorry, I should have known better. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate it. I'm gonna get into a stable hover, which is more hard than it should be, but it is what it is. Okay, from a stable hover, I'm gonna rotate. There's low rate, there's high rate for the yaw access. Okay, there's low rate, there's high rate. See how much faster it goes? So I want faster for ro rotational control. And then over here, there's, it's harder to demonstrate this one. There's a lower rate. Excuse me, I think that must not like return as quick. And then there's high rate, okay? It comes right back. So there's the, I think that must give you more freedom of movement. But as you can see, when it's, when it's a double beep, it's, it's the more responsive, the more crazy control, okay? The single beep is the more subdued method, okay? So I'm going to land it here and we'll wrap it up. Okay, so that all being understood, pretty cool helicopter, um, good for the money. Maybe not the best helicopter I've ever flown, but it's also quite a bit cheaper. Um, the counterparts that we showed you earlier in the video, also available from Banggood. Uh, Banggood sent this out for us to take a look at, and so thanks for that. And it's it's a pretty neat little heli, um, very resilient. I don't think the other ones would have stood up to as much abuse. They would have damaged the walls more mm -hmm. and the doors. So this yep. this would be this would be all right for a first time flyer um, if they're 14 years or older. <laughs> Which good luck with that, Yishin. But still you probably could get away with it. And now we know what these buttons do. So remember, just listen. That's the low rate and that's the higher rate. Okay, so the one beat means low and the two beeps mean higher. So good luck interpreting that in the language. And remember, after a crash, always make sure that your links are installed here, okay? Those links are what do a lot. So thanks for watching, guys. Come back for more action. This thing is pretty cool. The E119.